I think it's increasingly the case now that you can't really be a contemporary artist without being at some level engaged with technology. And if you are engaged with technology, you need expert advice, you need expert assistance. There's simply no way around it. What that means is that the range of your vision, where vision means imaginative projection, can uh, be much wider because you don't have to, at a certain moment, think, oh, I don't know how to do that. I'll find somebody who does know how to do that, and then I'll work with them. To assist with the realization of his vision, Professor Reynolds assembled a team of collaborators with very specific skills. Ross Carr is a New York-based musician and visual artist. Ross is responsible for developing the still and moving images which populate three screens that are on stage behind the orchestra. The three screens are going to be surrounding the orchestra and scaled up um, about 150% from what you see behind me. They're modeled on the interior of the octagonal cupola on top of Washington's mansion. But each of these projection screen panels create a 36 panel array that's like the window panes of Washington's cupola um, so that we can have discrete imagery on each of the three 12 panel screens but also 36 discrete images in the immersive sort of projection environment. Jaime Oliver is a composer, an instrument builder, and a computer musician from Peru. Jaime's responsible for recording and processing sounds from Mount Vernon into the evocative landscape of sound imagery that accompanies the orchestra. I'm in charge of, the, of making the computer sounds. So the computer sounds were created with a series of algorithms we've worked together with Ro uh, Roger in the past and also with some new other ways of transforming sounds and creating uh, sound worlds. And they're all done by recording sounds at uh, George Washington's estate. Joseph Cusera is a sound and recording engineer with the University of California at San Diego. Joseph is in charge of all aspects of recording and disseminating the pre-recorded elements of George Washington. So I'm creating assets at the beginning and preparing them for the various individuals and then taking those, the assets that have been prepared by the other people in the team and manipulating them and um, creating the final mix for either a, a stereo mix to go with the video or a surround mix to go with the video or rehearsal tapes or live performance tapes. So I've, everything's been brightened here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's much better. And the texture, overlay texture, I've increased the contrast oh, so you can see the paper texture and the on the right screen as well. Screen. With the actual projector, it'll work. And now the background is yeah, solid. Yeah, it's much better. Much better. There's no way for us to get over can the, the contrast be any higher there? One, four, yeah. If things go well, they will understand my vision and I will give due respect to their ways of feeling and thinking. Uh, when that kind of thing happens and you seed as an artist some of your own authority, you go places that you could not go yourself and so do your collaborators. And that's what can be appealing. When his voice comes in, we should begin to have color. It okay. should be his warmth yep. and his age should be a little bit more palpable. Okay. Very often, egos get in the way of that. And they preclude. What I see is real collaboration. And real collaboration involves some level of accommodation. I still think there needs to be a leader. There still needs to be someone whose vision is guiding the whole. I know how to tell my collaborators when things aren't the way I want them and why they're not that way. So I work with a lot of young people and uh, these uh, relationships become sort of quasi-symbiotic. They have something I don't have, I have something they don't have and we trade off. I think two years ago, or maybe two and a half years ago, uh, Roger introduced me to this project concept, uh, this portrait of, of George Washington, um, and we were brainstorming about the idea of a multimedia collaboration 
which would involve live electronic sounds um, diffused in the space with numerous speakers in the Kennedy Center and also video projection design. And so he asked me to think about some ways in which imagery from George Washington's life and later we found Mount Vernon to be a, a, a site for shooting, how those images could be integrated into a symphonic performance um, by the National Symphony Orchestra on the Kennedy Center stage. So this is a bit early. This yeah. enters with the thunder sound. Let me slow it down a bit. Right. So this comes this in. This would have been the lattice right now. now. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Essentially what I was saying. I've worked with people who actually are visual artists on their own. And I have to respect how they see their worlds. And in the case of Ross, for example, he's not at this point interested in computer transformations of images. He's interested in working cinematically. He's a brilliant uh, musician as a percussionist, uh, and he thinks in a way that a musician does, but he has the capacity to do that musical thinking with visual images. So he understood, as soon as I explained to him my concept of morphing images, that they shouldn't be stills, they should be tracking videos. Made all the difference. So the brass and the, and the computer should be like a parrot. Yeah, 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 yes. Joseph Cusera, the recording engineer I've worked with for now maybe 30 years. And I've learned over time that his capacity to understand how to manage sound, recorded sound, disseminated sound, is way beyond anything that I could aspire to. And, I mean, he knows microphones, he knows loudspeakers, he knows digital mixers, he knows strategies for editing, which I understand, you know, in principle, but I could, it would be incredibly laborious to do. Joe handles the aspect of the design and the dissemination of a sound system. Ross worked with me to capture imagery to then montage it in relationship to this formative text. Jaime Oliver, who is a, a remarkable young composer and instrument builder and computer musician from Peru, uh, he was here as a graduate student and when this project came up I thought Jaime is the one that I want to work with. He spent a couple days capturing sounds from the, the Mount Vernon estate. Um, the sounds of wind and leaves and gravel and sounds that you'd hear as a tourist walking around, but close mic'd so that the detail is really present and then manipulated so that they come from all sides. So birds come from behind you and, and it really puts you in the environment of Mount Vernon. We recorded all these sounds from his house and decided to use those as the source material for the sound world we wanted to create. We recorded the mill, the grist mill that is really close by, where he would have uh, milled his grains, and we created cannons off of that to create the idea of war. So a lot of these sounds have that kind of strange integrity of being from his sound world and being transformed into these imaginary places where, where he would have been. And that has influenced a lot of the ways that I've designed the projections onto the three screens to make it an immersive experience. So the electronic sounds and the composed sounds from Roger Reynolds and the video are all mutually dependent and influential. The picture and the, the the music and the uh, the computer the computer generated sounds were all were all worked together perfectly. I think it really it works very well 
as I was listening to them speak and watching the video, the music in the background was making me feel very emotional and how the piece worked beautifully together.